a graphics processing unit, also occasionally called visual processing unit, is a specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation of images in a frame buffer intended for output to a display. GPUs are used in embedded systems, mobile phones, personal computers, workstations, and game consoles. Modern GPUs are very efficient at manipulating computer graphics and image processing, and their highly parallel structure makes them more effective than general-purpose CPUs for algorithms where the processing of large blocks of visual data is done in parallel. In a personal computer, a GPU can be present on a video card, or it can be embedded on the motherboard or, in certain CPUs, on the CPU die. The term GPU was popularized by NVIDIA in 1999, who marketed the GeForce 256s, the world's first GPU, or graphics processing unit. A single-chip processor with integrated transform, lighting, triangle setup, clipping, and rendering engines that are capable of processing a minimum of 10 million polygons per second. Rival ATI Technologies coined the term Visual Processing Unit or VPU with the release of the Radeon 9700 in 2002. History 1970s arcade system boards have been using specialized graphics chips since the 1970s. The key to understanding early video game hardware is that the RAM for frame buffers was too expensive, so video chips composited data together as the display was being scanned out on the monitor. Fujitsu's MB14241 video shifter was used to accelerate the drawing of sprite graphics for various 1970s arcade games from Taito and Midway, such as Gunfight, Sea Wolf and Space Invaders. The Namco Galaxy and arcade system in 1979 used specialized graphics hardware supporting RGB color, multicolored sprites and tile map backgrounds. The Galaxy N hardware was widely used during the golden age of arcade video games by game companies such as Namco, Century, Gremlin, IREM, Konami, Midway, Nichibitsu, Sega and Taito. In the home market, the Atari 2600 in 1977 used a video shifter called the Television Interface Adapter. The Atari 8-bit computers had antic a video processor which interpreted instructions describing display list, the way the scan lines map to specific bitmap to or character modes and where the memory is stored. 6502 machine code subroutines could be triggered on scan lines by setting a bit on a display list instruction. Antic also supported smooth vertical and horizontal scrolling independent of the CPU. 1980s The Williams Electronics Arcade Games Robotron, 2084, Joust, Sinistar, and Bubbles, all released in 1982, contain custom blitter chips for operating on 16 color bitmaps. In 1985, the Commodore Amiga featured a custom graphics chip, supporting line draw, area fill and a blitter unit which accelerated manipulation of bitmaps. Also included is a coprocessor with its own primitive instruction set, capable of directly invoking a sequence of graphics operations without CPU intervention, and altering a rendered frame on the fly before it is displayed on screen. In 1986, Texas Instruments released the TMS34010, the first microprocessor with on-chip graphics capabilities. It could run general-purpose code, but it had a very graphics-oriented instruction set. In 1991-1991, this chip would become the basis of the Texas Instruments graphics architecture Windows accelerator cards. In 1987, the IBM 8514 graphics system was released as one of the first video cards for IBM PC compatibles to implement fixed-function 2D primitives in electronic hardware. 
The same year, Sharp released the X6800, which used a custom graphics chipset that was powerful for a home computer at the time. With a 65,536 color palette and hardware support for sprites, scrolling and multiple play fields, eventually serving as a development machine for Capcom's CP system arcade board. Fujitsu later competed with the FM Towns computer, released in 1989 with support for a full 16,777,216 color palette. In 1988, the first dedicated polygonal 3D graphics boards were introduced in arcades with the Namco System 21 and Tato Air System, 1990s Indiana and 1991s3. Graphics introduced the S386C911, which its designers named after the Porsche 911 as an implication of the performance increase it promised. The 86C911 spawned a host of imitators. By 1995, all major PC graphics chip makers had added 2D acceleration support to their chips. By this time, fixed-function Windows accelerators had surpassed expensive general-purpose graphics coprocessors in Windows performance, and these coprocessors faded away from the PC market. Throughout the 1990s, 2D GUI acceleration continued to evolve. As manufacturing capabilities improved, so did the level of integration of graphics chips. Additional application programming interfaces arrived for a variety of tasks, such as Microsoft Swing Graphics Library for Windows 3X, and their later direct drawer interface for hardware acceleration of 2D games within Windows 95 and later. In the early and mid-1990s, CPU-assisted real-time 3D graphics were becoming increasingly common in arcade, computer and console games which led to an increasing public demand for hardware-accelerated 3D graphics. Early examples of mass-market 3D graphics hardware can be found in arcade system boards such as the Sega Model 1, Namco System 22, and Sega Model 2, and the fifth-generation video game consoles such as the Saturn, PlayStation and Nintendo 64. Arcade systems such as the Sega Model 2 and Namco Magic Edge Hornet Simulator in 1993 were capable of hardware T and L years before for appearing in consumer graphics cards. Fujitsu, which worked on the Sega Model 2 arcade system, began working on integrating T and L into a single LSI solution for use in home computers in 1995, the Fujitsu Pinalite. The first 3D geometry processor for personal computers, released in 1997. The first hardware T and L GPU on home video game consoles was the Nintendo 64's Reality Coprocessor, released in 1996. In 1997, Mitsubishi released the 3D PRO 2MP, a fully featured GPU capable of transformation and lighting. For workstations and Windows NT desktops, AMD utilize it for their Fire GL4000 graphics card, released in 1997. In the PC world, notable failed first tries for low-cost 3D graphics chips were the S3 Verge, AT iRage, and Matrox Mystique. These chips were essentially previous-generation 2D accelerators with 3D features bolted on. Many were even pin-compatible with the earlier-generation chips for ease of implementation and minimal cost. Initially, Performance 3D graphics were possible only with discrete boards dedicated to accelerating 3D functions such as the Power Van and the 3D FX Voodoo. However, as manufacturing technology continued to progress, video, 2D GUI acceleration and 3D functionality were all integrated into one chip. Renditions Verit chipsets were among the first to do this well enough to be worthy of note. In 1997, Rendition went a step further by collaborating with Hercules and Fujitsu on a Thriller Conspiracy project which combined a Fujitsu FX G1 Pinalite, 
geometry processor with a Verite V2200 core to create a graphics card with a full T and L engine years before NVIDIA's GeForce 256. This card, designed to reduce the load placed upon the system's CPU, never made it to market. OpenGL appeared in the early 90s as a professional graphics API, but originally suffered from performance issues which allowed the Glide API to step in and become a dominant force on the PC in the late 90s. However, these issues were quickly overcome and the Glide API fell by the wayside. Software implementations of OpenGL were common during this time, although the influence of OpenGL eventually led to widespread hardware support. Over time, a parity emerged between features offered in hardware and those offered in OpenGL. DirectX became popular among Windows game developers during the late 90s. Unlike OpenGL, Microsoft insisted on providing strict one-to-one -one support of hardware. The approach made DirectX less popular as a standalone graphics API initially, since many GPUs provided their own specific features, which existing OpenGL applications were already able to benefit from, leaving DirectX often one generation behind. Over time, Microsoft began to work more closely with hardware developers, and started to target the releases of DirectX to coincide with those of the supporting graphics hardware. Direct3D 5.0 was the first version of the burgeoning API to gain widespread adoption in the gaming market, and it competed directly with many more hardware-specific, often proprietary graphics libraries, while OpenGL maintained a strong following. Direct3D 7.0 introduced support for hardware-accelerated transform and lighting for Direct3D, while OpenGL had this capability already exposed from its inception. 3D accelerator cards moved beyond being just simple rasterizers to add another significant hardware stage to the 3D rendering pipeline. The NVIDIA GeForce 256 was the first consumer-level card released on the market with hardware-accelerated t and all. While professional 3D cards already had this capability, Hardware transform and lighting, both already existing features of OpenGL, came to consumer-level hardware in the 90s and set the precedent for later pixel shader and vertex shader units which were far more flexible in programmable. 2000-2006 NVIDIA was first to produce a chip capable of programmable shading, the GeForce 3. Each pixel could now be processed by a short program that could include additional image textures as inputs, and each geometric vertex could likewise be processed by a short program before it was projected onto the screen. By October 2002, with the introduction of the ATI Radeon 9700, the world's first Direct 3D 9.0 accelerator, pixel and vertex shaders could implement looping and lengthy floating point math, and were quickly becoming as flexible as a CPU's, yet orders of magnitude faster for image array operations. Pixel shading is often used for bump mapping, which adds texture to make an object look shiny, dull, rough, or even round or extruded. 2006 to present with the introduction of the GeForce 8 series, which was produced by NVIDIA, and then new generic stream processing unit GPUs became a more generalized computing device. Today, parallel GPUs have begun making computational inroads against the CPU and a subfield of research, dubbed GPU computing or GPGPU for general purpose computing on GPU, has found its way into fields as diverse as machine learning, oil exploration, scientific image processing, linear algebra, statistics, 3D reconstruction and even stock options pricing determination. Over the years, the energy consumption of GPUs has increased and to manage it, several techniques have been proposed. NVIDIA's CUDA platform was the earliest widely adopted programming model for GPU computing. 
More recently OpenCL has become broadly supported. OpenCL is an open standard defined by the Cronus Group which allows for the development of code for both GPUs and CPUs with an emphasis on portability. OpenCL solutions are supported by Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, and ARM, and according to a recent report by Evans Data, OpenCL is the GPGPU development platform most widely used by developers in both the US and Asia Pacific. GPU companies Many companies have produced GPUs under a number of brand names. In 2009 Intel, NVIDIA and AMD, ATI were the market share leaders, with 49.4%, 27.8% and 20.6% market share respectively. However, those numbers include Intel's integrated graphics solutions as GPUs. Not counting those numbers, NVIDIA and ATI control nearly 100% of the market as of 2008. In addition, S3 Graphics and Matrox produce GPUs, computational functions. Modern GPUs use most of their transistors to do calculations related to 3D computer graphics. They were initially used to accelerate the memory-intensive work of texture mapping and rendering polygons. Later adding units to accelerate geometric calculations such as the rotation and translation of vertices into different coordinate systems. Recent developments in GPUs include support for programmable shaders which can manipulate vertices and textures with many of the same operations, supported by CPUs. Oversampling and interpolation, techniques to reduce aliasing, and very high precision color spaces. Because most of these computations involve matrix and vector operations, engineers and scientists have increasingly studied the use of GPUs for non-graphical calculations. In addition to the 3D hardware, today's GPUs include basic 2D acceleration and frame buffer capabilities. Newer cards like AMD, ATI HD 5000 HD 7000 even lack 2D acceleration, it has to be emulated by 3D hardware. GPU accelerated video decoding Most GPUs made since 1995 support the YUV color space and hardware overlays, important for digital video playback and many GPUs made since 2000 also support MPEG primitives such as motion compensation and IDCT. This process of hardware accelerated video decoding, where portions of the video decoding process and video post-processing are offloaded to the GPU hardware, is commonly referred to as GPU accelerated video decoding, GPU assisted video decoding. GPU Hardware Accelerated Video Decoding or GPU Hardware Assisted Video Decoding More recent graphics cards even decode high-definition video on the card, offloading the central processing unit. The most common APIs for GPU Accelerated Video Decoding are DXVA for Microsoft Windows Operating System and VDPAU, VAAPI, XVMC and XVBA for Linux-based and Unix-like operating systems. All except XVMC are capable of decoding videos encoded with MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4 ASP, MPEG-4 AVC, VC-1, WMV-3, WMV-9, XVID, OpenDivX and Dive 5 codecs, while XVMC is only capable of decoding MPEG-1 and MPEG-2. Video decoding processes that can be accelerated The video decoding processes that can be accelerated by today's modern GPU hardware are motion compensation, inverse discrete cosine transform inverse telecini 3 to 2 in 2 to 2 pull down correction, inverse modified discrete cosine transform, in loop deblocking filter, intraframe prediction, inverse quantization, variable length decoding, more commonly known as slice level acceleration. Spatial temporal deinterlacing and automatic interlace, progressive source detection, bitstream processing, and perfect pixel positioning.